All right. So good morning, everybody in the United States. Good afternoon for the people in um, Europe and probably good night for the people in Asia. Uh, we're here today for the second, second day of API Days New York. Uh, thank you very much for coming here to attend this virtual conference. My name is Vincenzo Chianese. I'm going to be your host for today. You can see on the left that the first speaker is already here, so I don't want to waste any more time. I'm going to be leaving the stage uh, right now to Ainon Shkedi. He is the head of security research for Traceable.ai, and he's going to be talking about the OWASP top 10 on the topic or APIs. I'm gonna be leaving the stage. Uh, feel free to share your screen. Let's just make sure it works correctly and then I'll, I'll leave the stage to you. All right, take it away. Awesome, thank you, Vincenzo. Um, so hi guys and thank you for attending the session. Uh, we got only 20 minutes, so I'm gonna try to do it quick. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the OWASP top 10 for APIs. Let's uh, take a look at the agenda. First of all, you want to try to understand what is traditional application security and how is it different than modern application security. This is the, the foundation for API security. Then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the access control challenge or the authorization challenge, and to give you a quick few examples for the OWASP top 10 for APIs uh, with a few real world examples. So before we start, just a few words about myself. My name is Inon Shkeli. I'm the head of security research in the startup that's called Traceable AI. Uh, we do something in the field of API security and uh, application security. And uh, I've grown up with APIs. So what does it mean? I started my career back in used to be part of the red team of the Israeli army. And uh, for five years, I had a chance to break into many systems in the field of government, military, and financial. As you can imagine, those systems are heavily based on like traditional technologies like Java, ASP.NET, SAP, and very old concepts like multi-page applications, on-prem environment, waterfall deployment, and APIs used to be just a niche component, mostly for B2B communication. After these uh, five years, I decided to buy one-way tickets and move to the Silicon Valley in California. And for the last three years, I've been working mostly with startups and T1 companies. And I get exposed to a new field of technologies like Ruby on Rails, Node.js, Elixir. And I got to see very modern concepts like single page applications, cloud environment, CICD. And the most important part, all these applications are heavily based on APIs. It's no longer just a niche component, it's actually the backbone of the app. And the first, the first thing I figured out after I moved to the Silicon Valley, is that I couldn't really find the same vulnerabilities. Like back in Israel, I used to find like, uh, you know, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, the more traditional stuff. And when Valley, I couldn't really find those, change my mindset and my uh, techniques in order to adapt myself to the modern environment. And this is why I joined the OS top 10 for APIs project. So before we talk about modern application security and specifically about API security, let's try to understand what's changed in the field of application development. If we take a look at the traffic between the client, the servers, and databases uh, in traditional applications, it was pretty simple. The client would ask for a specific web page from the web server, for example, home.jsp. Then the web server would fetch data from the database in order to build a uh, visual page. Then the web server would render. Uh, uh, rendering is the creating visual application and return this HTML page, the visual page to the client. Uh, this will be presented to the, to the user by the browser. Today, things look, look completely different. First of all, the client asks for very specific pieces of information. For example, give me the last 20 notifications. Give me the last five articles. The clients know better what they want. And then I would say that the web server, the APIs, in many ways, they're used more like a proxy be between the database and the client. The web server simply fetch data from databases. Sometimes they do some filtering. Uh, and it's important also to notice that there are more types of databases. Instead of just 
a traditional SQL. Today you can find no SQL, you can find Elastic. And then the next step is that the web server returns to the client uh, the data, but not in the form of HTML, but in the form of JSON, which represents raw data. And one of the most interesting changes in modern applications that impact security is that the rendering component moved from the backend to the client. Today, the, the rendering is done on the client side. A few other changes is that you have more clients. Instead of just web browsers, you can find today mobile applications, you can find IoT devices, and even developers that use your API to build their own applications. The second part is that uh, today, there are less abstraction layers. And this is a very interesting change. One of the reasons for that is that the clients, the web servers, and databases speak the same language. They all speak uh, in JSON. So many times when your mobile application or browser is processing a JSON object locally, it's the same object that is stored on the database and the same object that uh, is processed by the web server, which is very interesting. It allows the, it allows the client to understand better what's going on on the backend side. A few words about DevSecOps, uh, well, like DevOps. So there is good news and bad news. Uh, if you take a look at concepts like CICD, uh, Cloud, and Kubernetes, uh, they solve many traditional security vulnerabilities, like uh, classic IT issues, like open ports. They barely exist just because uh, the cloud provider takes care of it. And there is also bad news. It's really hard to keep on track with these APIs. It leads to shadow APIs. I would say that sometimes it feels it's almost too easy to do DevOps. You just click a few, you know, you just click a few uh, clicks on the AWS console, and you spin up a new API. You spin up a new service. Uh, it makes it too easy to, to create environments. So, in the field of application security, there is good news and bad news as well. Let's talk about some of the traditional vulnerabilities that, that barely exist in modern applications. The first one is SQL injections. SQL injections used to be a really uh, building back in the days. Today, it's really hard to find them in modern applications because of the use of ORMs. If we talk, if we talk about uh, CSRF, uh, if the application uses authorization header, it's not vulnerable to CSRF. If there is no cookies, there is no CSRF. Uh, or for example, XXC, which is a vulnerability in the passing process of XMLs, uh, it barely exists today because developers choose to use JSON instead of XMLs. Let's jump into the bad news. So APIs are a really attractive uh, target for attackers. Let's try to understand why. First of all, APIs expose a larger attack instead of just one call to the home.jsp uh, webpage. Today, there are many calls behind the scenes. And also, APIs receive more parameters. As an attacker, every time you see a new parameter, a new API endpoint, it's basically a new field to explore, a new potential attack surface. The second point is that APIs are oversharing. APIs expose uh, less abstraction layers. It means that as an attacker, you can just take a look at the traffic, and you have a much better understand understanding of what's going on on the backend. You can actually understand how the code works which allows you to exploit many underlying vulnerabilities. And the third point is that APIs are very predictable. There are many, uh, there are many things in the standard of REST and GraphQL that makes uh, APIs much more predictable. So it's much easier to understand what are the properties of the resources or to understand how to call specific functions. One of the impacts of this, uh, uh, of this component is that today it's much easier to find admin endpoints. So after I solved these changes, I decided to join the OSP API security project together with Erez Elon, who is the director of research at Checkmarks. The sponsors of the project is Checkmarks and Salt Security. So before we start talking about the OSP top 10 for APIs, I think that the biggest challenge of APIs is authorization. It's really hard to implement a decent authorization mechanism. And it's really interesting to take a look at the list and to see that many of the vulnerabilities are actually related to authorization. 
And you know, it led me to ask myself, why is it so hard to implement a decent authorization mechanism in APIs and modern applications? So I believe there are two main reasons. The first reason is if you think about that, authorization is not just one component. It's not like authentication, which is usually done in one place in the code or a few places. Authorization lives in many, many different places in your application. If you talk about the function of authorization, it could be done in the code level, configuration, sometimes even in the API gateway level. If we talk about the object level authorization, you should have authorization checks for object level in almost every controller that your app exposes, which is a lot of code that needs to perform authorization checks. The second part is that today in modern applications, you can find very complex uh, types of users and roles and hierarchies between them. So you might have three groups of riders, drivers, and admins in some modern applications, but then you can find some weird uh, scenarios. For example, that the user Hugo has two sub users, or that the user Jack uh, actually belongs to two different groups, to drivers and admins, uh, which makes it really hard to, to write uh, good policies for what is allowed and what is not allowed. So let's jump into the OWASP top 10 uh, uh, for APIs list. And uh, this is the first vulnerability, broken object level authorization. You might know this one by the name of insecure direct object reference, IDOR, but we decided to change the name because we believe that IDOR is not uh, a great name in the field of APIs. So what happens in, uh, in BOLA, in broken object level authorization? In order to understand it, let's take a look at some ride sharing app. So let's say that you took a ride on, uh, on this ride sharing app and you want to rate your uh, driver. So you just click on the five stars button and then your mobile client would send an API call to post slash API slash trips slash But because you have, you have taken many different rides as part of your use of the app, your mobile client has to mention which ride you want to update. In this case, it's the ID of 718492. Um, then what happens that the developers in the backend, they don't actually validate that this ID of the ride or the trip actually belongs to you. So what you can do is to write a script that update all the rides of all the, in, all the rides in the app, uh, which is kind of severe because you can write all the drivers with zero. There are many ways to exploit BOLA. And this is by far the most common uh, vulnerability in APIs. I personally found it in every single API that I tested in the last five years. And just to share with you a quick example from uh, the recent time, this is a Bola in uh, Uber that led to a full account takeover. So what happens here is pretty simple. It was found by, it was found by Anand Prakash from AppSecure. And you can see in the API call that uh, Anand performed a simple API request to get constant screen details. One of the parameters is the user ID. This is the ID of the user of Anand. And the response contains full details about the user, including the first name, last name, a mobile number, and many other PII. But the most interesting part, it also contains the authentication token of the user. So if you could only access your own user ID, it would be fine. But the problem with Uber, the de developers didn't really check that this user ID belongs to you. So you could access every user in Uber and to get his or her authentication token, which is basically full account takeover using Bola. The second vulnerability I want to talk about, it's called excessive data exposure. This is different than sensitive data exposure. Uh, and what happens in this vulnerability is very interesting. And it's very, actually it's very fun to see it from like a pen tester perspective. Instead of finding complex vulnerabilities and to change different things together to get your result, you can just take a look at the API traffic of other users because APIs leak PII by design, just if you take a look at the response. This is a very interesting uh, thing. And let's take a look how it looks in like real application. So if you're using some dating app, it's very common here in the Silicon Valley. Um, 
you can see like some profile of, let's say you are using this dating app and you see the profile of Bob, including prof uh, public information like uh, his name and the hobbies and the profile picture. If you take a look behind the scenes, the traffic would look like the client would perform this uh, API call to get slash users slash 717, which is the user ID of Bob. And then the response contains all the public information, like the name, the profile picture, but also the address of Bob, which is PII. It's a sensitive information that shouldn't be exposed to other users. What happens is that the developers in the backend, they rely on the front-end engineers to filter out these details and not to present them to the user. And you can see that they actually did it. You can, as a regular user on the app, you can't really see this address, but uh, as an attacker, you can easily sniff the traffic between the client and the API and this private information. So filtering sensitive data on the client side is always a bad idea. And this is a very common vulnerability. A recent example is from the Three Fun app. It basically an app that allows you uh, as a couple to find other people that are willing to join you. It's basically a dating app for swingers. So what happens, it was found by the researcher Alex Lomas from Fantastic Partners. He found that the API endpoint of match users, this API endpoint should return to your uh, mobile device, all the users around you. But instead of returning just simple data, public data, it returned very sensitive data about the user, including private photos and the exact location. The next thing that Alex did is was to write a script to, to find all the users around the White House. And you can see the results on the screen, which is pretty interesting. Um, the third vulnerability I want to talk about is broken function level authorization. It's another authorization issue. So let's say that you have an API that has actually three different sub APIs, admin API, riders API, and drivers API. They should be used by different types of users. So if you have an admin that is accessing the admin API, for example, in order to, to delete a specific user, uh, the admin wants to delete user number 717, which is legit because uh, admins should be able to delete users. But what happens if an attacker that doesn't have an admin account, it just has a regular account on the app, access the same exactly API endpoint. Many times the developers in the backend, they don't actually validate that the user belongs to the right group and they just let you to access admin endpoints. This is a very severe vulnerability. And uh, in this case, the attacker could basically write a script to delete all the users in the app. Uh, a recent example for uh, Buffla, it's from Shopify. It was found by UZ Sunny, and uh, he, he won a $2,000 bounty on Hacker One, and it allowed you to use an admin function and to define yourself as a collaborator on every Shopify shop. A collaborator gives you full access to the shop, so you can basically become an admin of every shop on Shopify. Uh, we have only two minutes, so let's talk briefly about mass assignment. In order to understand mass assignment, let's see what is mass assi what is the mass assignment feature. So on the left side, you can see a code to create a new user in traditional application. This is not mass assignment. This is just a regular way to fetch parameters. But then modern frameworks like Ruby on Rails, Node.js, and many others introduce a very interesting feature that allows you to save a lot of time as a developer. Instead of writing uh, five or more lines of code, you can just use this interesting one-liner to create a new user based or a new object based on the input from the user. Many times the developers don't validate uh, that the object from the user, the JSON from the object contains only legit uh, properties. And you can actually assign to yourself properties that you shouldn't, shouldn't have access to. Like in this example, uh, a legit API call would be username in on password one to six, but then a malicious API call would contain a, a new parameter of role equals admin. And this way I can create myself an admin account. Uh, this is a recent example from New Relic. The attacker managed to create himself, a, uh, like an, uh, to, get, to give himself API access in, uh, without paying for it. So it is a very quick introduction for the OWASP top 10 for APIs and the API security. 
Let me know if you have any questions you can ask here. And if I don't have enough time to answer them, you can also uh, reach me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Hainan. I do believe we have time for questions. Yeah, we do have five minutes. So I'm going to be checking very quickly what we have on the screen. We try to read the most interesting one. So the first one that I see is, can you share a little bit more details on the file server as an API? And did those requirements require any transformation as of size factor, for example? Mm -hmm. um, where can I see this question, by the way, on, on this my screen? Is it possible? If you go in the chat, you can see. Uh, it should be. If you, you, oh, you, know, okay, you have yeah, a webcam and you have the chat on the right, if you go on the stage, uh, Abiram asks such a question. Like, can you share more details on the file server as an API? And then, well, in case you, you want to skip to the next one directly, is OWASP, uh, I don't really understand this one. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I got the questions about the file server as an API. Um, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe Abiram, if if you if you are still online, you can probably try to clarify the questions. We we don't really get none of those. Um, yeah. Um, well, in the meantime, I'm, I'd probably ask the question. Like in all, it seems like you've been in the space for a little bit for a little bit of time, and so um, you know, I was wondering if you have any. I don't want to say crazy story, but what what is something that uh, you personally saw that was I'm not sure if I got the whole question. There are some, uh, I think, uh, latency issues. But uh, are you asking what is the craziest story from API security that I found? Yeah, it seems that you got disconnected. Um, yeah, so I got the chance to find very interesting API vulnerabilities. Part of them I found as part of my uh, service in the Israeli army. So I, unfortunately, I can't talk about. Um, but yeah, probably one of the craziest uh, vulnerabilities I found uh, in the recent in the recent few years was in a very large uh, like food delivery app. I can't say the name, but it allowed me to get full account takeover for all the accounts in the API. Yeah, we can't hear you, uh, Um, I see that I got a question from a. I see that I got a question from a Palvin. What would you recommend to API publishers on how to test against security issues? Uh, this is a good question. Um, so the the good news about APIs is that they are very predictable. Like uh, the the predict the predictable nature of APIs allows you as an attacker to attack them better and to understand better to exploit vulnerabilities, which is like bad news for the companies, but also there is good news about it. Because of the, predict the predictable nature of APIs, you can see many security companies that leverage this predictable nature in order to build security solutions customized for APIs. My company is one of them, um, and you can find other companies in the market to, that do the same thing. Uh, for API pen testing, is a bit more challenging in order to find vulnerabilities like, uh, like for scanners, to find vulnerabilities like Bola. Uh, it's kind of challenging. I personally didn't find any good tools to find like uh, the more business logic type of attacks. Okay, I have one last question. It's going to be very quick. What is your takeaway on the security bounties? You know, those companies that are like, they me a problem, will probably give you some money or even hire you. You think it's a good idea? Or the security bounties even? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, and you can see many companies like HackerOne and Backcrowd that uh, that have this type of uh, platforms to allow this uh, this thing. Uh, I think it's a great way for companies to find vulnerabilities. But you need to remember that you can't find everything using uh, bug bounties, and it's very expensive. You should also, if you if you're a good yeah. company and you have budget for security, you should also consider to use the other application security tools that are more automatic. 
Yeah, right. And maybe hire good people, you know, dedicated to security. I guess that answered the question. All right. Mm -hmm.